Thanks for tuning in. I'm Melissa Dalman for Finance News. Joining me today is Chief Executive Officer from Imitep, Mark Fucht. Mark, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Imutep has recently announced new trial data with your lead product candidate FD in patients with second line non-small cell lung cancer. What results did you see? Indeed, I believe uh, we see encouraging results. Um, first of all, it's important to understand the setting for those patients. They fail under best available standard of care, so usually anti-PD-1 therapies such as Keytruda for instance, or the majority in our clinical trial um, anti-PD-1 therapies plus traditional chemotherapy, so even under the combination. And those patients um, typically see a tumor progress after a while. This is confirmed by a CT scan, and then the patients are required to have a second CT scan for weeks thereafter in order to confirm that progress of the tumor. It's a tough setting for the patients, of course, but it's a requirement for our clinical trial because we would like to exclude any patients which have a so-called pseudo-progression, so where you see inflammation around the tumor, T-cells attacking the tumor, so in reality a tumor shrinkage. So I believe we have one of the toughest settings in the industry, and it's practically, if you like, a rescue mission for those patients failing under best available standard of care. And indeed, we see a benefit, um, a clinical benefit, for uh, around about 36% of patients. So it's stabilization of disease or even um, so-called partial response to tumor shrinkage. And this together with the tumor dynamics, change of tumor dynamics, together with the very good safety compared to the other option, which is chemotherapy, I believe is very encouraging. That's great to hear. So how does this treatment compare to other cancer treatments for this particular space? So in second line on small cell lung cancer, there's unfortunately not a lot uh, you can provide to these patients, um, especially not um, if they got an anti-PD-1 therapy in first line. Again, a therapy such as Keytruda, for instance, or Obdivo. So the typical option is uh, uh, chemotherapy. And chemotherapy, like doxetaxel, is unfortunately very toxic. So the majority of uh, the patients has severe side effects, so-called grade 3 or grade 4, um, more than 50% uh, of patients actually. So it's not a good option to have and also the median overall survival for those patients is according to uh, different studies just between six to nine months. So it's really um, a terrible setting and to make a difference there, which is very difficult, uh, is uh, our mission. So in essence, would you say that the FD lead product versus the current treatments out there could appear to be somewhat of a let's say, a safer option to these patients? A safer option and maybe uh, future data needs to show that also better in terms of overall survival. We will release more data throughout the year. Um, so indeed, yes, safer and hopefully better. Thanks for that, Mark. And just to remind our viewers, where are you at in terms of the phase of the, of the, of the clinical trials? So in second line non-small cell lung cancer, as in first line non-small cell lung cancer, uh, we are in phase two stage. So I believe uh, you know that we have phase one, phase two, phase three. So we are in uh, mid-stage of development for lung cancer. What is the market size of this actual industry? Lung cancer is uh, the biggest cancer indication. It's, um, if you like, um, uh, really a crown jewel in immuno-oncology, so it's very important. It's uh, one of the leading uh, causes of death uh, in cancer. Uh, and it's, of course, also commercially, given the high unmet medical need, commercially very attractive. It's estimated that's between uh, 25 to 30 billion US dollars annually in the coming years. Last question. Do you think a clinical trial will be set up to seek regulatory approval? That's an important question. Um, indeed, in second line non-small cell lung cancer, as well as in other options, um, the data is currently pointing to the direction that uh, future clinical development towards a registration could be feasible. Of course, um, uh, this will have uh, um, take certain prerequisites. We need to carefully evaluate our different options, but the current data seems to be a good fundament uh, to move uh, ahead also in this indication. Mark, it was great to speak with you. Very insightful, and I look forward to seeing this unfold. Thank you so much.